This is going to be a tutorial video. I'm gonna teach you how to make a synth pad in Logic Pro. I have a song here called Holding Back, and I want to talk about where you can find synth pads in Logic Pro, like the free ones, the stock ones, and uh, I'll show you some of the paid VSTs I'm using that I, I recommend as well. You know when you're creating a song and the main instrument just sounds so empty, maybe in your verses, it just sounds a bit too bare, a bit too empty. Using a synth pad, a very subtle synth pad, can really bring a lot of depth and width to your song, making it sound much bigger than it actually is. The idea about the synth pad is it's not distracting to the listener. They're still focused on that main instrument that maybe is in the center of your song or, or panned a bit left or right but the synth pad opens up something behind it and something on the sides. Let's take this bass, for example. So have a listen to the bass on its own. Now let's add this distorted pad, kind of a Mellotron pad. So this is what this sounds like. You'll also, if you did notice this, congrats, there is, look at this panning knob while I'm playing this, uh, this loop. It's being automated a bit right, a bit left, and it's kind of swinging back and forth, giving the listener some interesting bits that this pad in the background is moving around, and that helps a lot to create a cool space in the background. Let's first touch on how to add synth pads with the free stock instruments in Logic Pro. So you would go to Track, New Software Instrument, and open up the library. And inside Logic, it's all organized nicely. The pads are under Synthesizer, pad it has a nice label and you can see there's a lot of a lot of results here if you have a sound that you like but it's just not it's not there yet you might want to edit it a bit you can always do so by opening up the instrument this is the es2 synth in logic you can click on the middle and this opens up the synthesizer or you can go to presets inside the synthesizer like synth pads here are all the synth pads in the es2 synth and these are the dials of a modular synthesizer where you can go and change the dials. You don't have to do any of this. It's just if you want to edit a little bit. And, uh, and in the next section, I'm going to talk about what things you might want to edit within a synthesizer, a synth pad specifically. So that's where the free synth pads are in Logic. I'll show you what I use for paid synths. There are a few different ones I use. Um, I'll add uh, a new a software instrument. I'll show you how I find them. I just go to the empty instrument plug-in block. I click it and then I go down to my AU instruments. So I've been using a lot the Arturia Lab package. It's the Arturia Lab 5 package. These are just, these here are all synthesizers, sorry, all here, modeled after popular synths. For example, the Juno 6 is, Juno 6 5 is modeled after the Juno 6. So, but the Analog Lab V package, quickly I'll go through this because I know not everyone has it. It looks, it looks like a library of sounds. You can also go to the category of pad and go through these pads here. Same thing, just like in Logic, if you want to go and edit the pad, you can open up the instrument. For example, this Venus Rising Strings pad is from the Juno 6, and then we can go and edit the Juno 6 pad. What sounds should you look for when you're looking for a Juno pad? And here's what I recommend, especially when it's going to be that underlaying instrument behind your main instrument, for example, in our case, the bass track, make sure that it's a pad that it's not too distracting so it doesn't take away from the bass, that it can just kind of fit in below the track. That's why they call it a pad. It's just padded in there nicely. Let's go through a couple synths and I'll explain if I think that's a right fit versus if it's not a right fit. So for, for example, this Venus Rising synth. <laughs> That might be a little bit too uh, too much attack. I'll go. I'll get into that in the next section. Let's go to the blue strings. That's not bad. It just didn't really jump out at me. Let's go sweep and let's then do Tokyo Dreams. 
I think that's the right texture and volume, but it's just not the right sound in terms of production wise that I'm looking for in this song. Tokyo Dreams. That's that's kind of cool. That might work as well. See, they're all all similar in a way. They're not too too distracting because I'm in the pad category. Now, what do you actually play with your synth pad, right? Do you just play the chords of your chord progression? Yes, you can, but no, you don't have to. Sometimes when you play the all the notes in the chords, it just sounds too stock. So what I would recommend is um, if you don't know a lot about music theory, lay down the chords of your song and then get into the MIDI editor and start playing around, taking some notes out. I often find that less notes with a pad sound better because it just doesn't sound as busy. You can also add notes, but be careful if you're going to add notes and take away notes, make sure that those notes are in the scale. And one thing you can do to make sure of that is you can actually go to scale quantize here and you can change the the key of your song. So if you know you're in uh, like natural minor, like a G natural minor, and you change your tool to a paintbrush tool. Now, if I hold command, I get my paintbrush tool. I can only click um, notes that are in the scale. See, for example, I'll zoom in to show you. You see this note here? I can actually, if I hold my paintbrush tool, I can't click and put a mini note in there because it's not in the scale of G minor. So let's move back out of that. The other alternative you can do is you can just play the root notes of your chord progression. So if you are an E, G, C, you can just play the E note, the G note, and, the, and sorry, and the C note. That's an option as well and a very popular option. You could also play the third of that, just the one and the third, three, sorry, or the one and the five of the chords. That's another option as well. Now, let's say you have a sound of a synth, whether it's paid or the free ones in Logic, and you're looking to edit that sound. What things can you edit inside that big modular synth? So let's pull that up. It was the eighth wonder. And let's open up our ES2. I'm not going to go through everything. That would be nuts. And I don't, honestly, I don't know how to work all of this um, either. But a couple things that are going to make a big difference, let's go through them. So one would be just to know what oscillators are and why you might want to turn them on or off in the shapes of the oscillators, and then um, looking at attack, sustain, uh, release, and decay. So oscillators are up here. This is the one, two, and three. So I just, by clicking those, I'm actually turning those off. And when you turn off the oscillators to a synth, there's gonna be no sound. See, I'm touching my keyboard and there's no sound at all. Basically, you think of, think of the oscillator as the engine to the synth. As soon as you turn an oscillator on, your synth will start making sound hear that it's very very low so if you turn on all the oscillators then you have kind of three engines or three propellers whatever analogy you want to work with the synth will start working let's go to the bottom here and look at the attack decay see see the a here and d that's attack decay a a d s attack decay sustain and then release here and then the same thing for these same thing goes for any paid synth if i go back to the analog lab here and open up like the venus rising synth in the juno synth you'll notice there is uh, where the attack decay sustain release all these knobs here let me know if that was value to you in a comment please here's a video of me and my last show playing live i'm going to be posting a few different variety of videos this year, tutorials, me playing live, cover songs, reviews, comparisons, this kind of thing, all centered around music. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Well, I can be a love song.